Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Lenovo Tab 4 8 Plus. This is an 8-inch Android tablet that has 4G LTE built in, yet costs under $230. Not a bad deal from a name brand manufacturer. We're going to be taking a closer look at this in just a second. Now this review is being sponsored by Pulse.com. They're a great service that can come out to your home or office or even a coffee shop to fix your broken smartphone or other mobile device. That includes screens and batteries and uh, just about anything else that might be afflicting your phone. The technicians they use are highly vetted and trained professionals, which means that your repair is going to be done right the first time. You set up a time on the Pulse.com website seven days a week, even holidays, and the technician will be there when they say they will get there. And in many cases, you can get them there the same exact day. So check out Pulse.com today to get your phone or other tablet device fixed. Now, the tablet we're reviewing today is on loan from Lenovo. When we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and nobody has reviewed this content before I uploaded it. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. As I mentioned, you can get this for under $230. And in fact, on uh, Amazon right now, it's going for about $215. It's got an 8-inch 1900 by 1200 IPS display. It looks great, actually. I'm very pleased with the color and the brightness and the viewing angles. Uh, really nice to see this. We've seen some really nice displays on low-end Lenovo tablets in the past. And this one continues that tradition of a decent display. It has a Qualcomm MSM8953 processor built in, which is good enough for light gaming and web browsing and that kind of thing. But as you'll see when we get a little further into the review, it won't be as quick in the graphics department as the NVIDIA K1, which is still our uh, top achieving Android tablet that's out there. But uh, for a bulk of the Android library, this is going to be just fine. It's got 16 gigabytes of storage, but only two gigabytes of RAM built in. I would have liked to have seen maybe three or four for better multitasking performance. But again, at this price point, uh, not bad overall from a name brand manufacturer. It is running Android 7.1 Nougat. It weighs about 310 grams or 10.93 ounces. Our battery life we're seeing at about uh, nine to 10 hours, which is about where Lenovo is saying you should get with this. I would imagine if you're running the LTE radio, you might see slightly less battery life with that and likewise if you're gaming on it you might see a little less as well now what you do here to get your lte going is pop out this little tab here and then there's a little tray that you can pull out here and what you can put in this tray there goes my sim card uh, is you can put your sim card a nano sim along with an sd card to augment its onboard storage and you just slide all this stuff back in to get that up and running in the united states it is compatible with every carrier with the exception of Sprint. So that is Verizon, T-Mobile, uh, and AT&T, and all of the MVNOs that those uh, carriers work with. If you're using a carrier that uses Sprint, you're going to be out of luck on this one. And then this uh, tab here goes back into place and you can very easily get things back up and running. I did run the tablet out to my uh, local coffee shop where I know I've got the best signal in town. I have one of these Freedom Pop Cards, the free uh, service there, and I was getting about 75 megabits per second downstream and uh, about 11 upstream on it. So that was pretty good for uh, the best spot in town for me. So overall, I think you'll have a good uh, wi or non-Wi-Fi experience with this thing when you are out of the house. Uh, that's it for this side of the device. On the bottom, uh, there's nothing down here either except a small microphone. They do have two Dolby Atmos speakers here on the, on the bottom, but they're uh, angled towards you. So when you have it in this configuration here, you've got nice stereo separation. It's not a crazy deep sound, but it's a good stereo sound. And I like how they angled uh, these little speaker grills up at you. So they're not running to the side of the device. They're actually coming at you, which is what you want for uh, sound here. So that was good to see on that. Uh, on the top here, you just have a headphone jack and a USB Type-C port for charging. I don't believe this will do any display or any other fancy USB-C output, but uh, you can charge some stuff and also uh, plug in some OTG devices. I've got a little USB-C memory uh, stick that I can pop in there and that seemed to work fine. Now what's really cool here is on the other side, this is a power button, but it also is a fingerprint reader and it can support multiple profiles. So right now I'm logged in as me. I'm just going to switch it off real quick and I'm going to put my other finger here just on that switch without pushing it. And usually what happens here, of course I'm on camera, it won't do it now, there it goes. Uh, it's going to switch over to the other uh, account that I have on here. So I didn't even need to push the button or log in. 
All I had to do was switch it off and just rest my finger on there, recognize the fingerprint, and I was able to uh, switch accounts automatically and go back. This might be really nice if you're sharing this with a child. They don't have to have a password or anything. They can just take their finger, uh, rest it on that switch when it's off, and it will uh, just boot you right into that account automatically, and you can switch right back when you're done. It does keep them both loaded in the background, and again, that might be where having a little more RAM might have been helpful, but uh, this was a very cool feature to see on here, and I really like having that fingerprint sensor uh, integrated like that. And the only other control on here is the uh, volume rocker on the side, and uh, that is pretty much it, a very simple device here. Uh, there are some cameras built in. You've got an 8 megapixel camera and flash here on the back. Not spectacular, but you can get a photo or two out of it in a pinch, so it's useful for that. It will also shoot video at 30 frames per second, running at a 1080p resolution. Again, nothing spectacular, but if you're looking for a quick photo or video to send to somebody or share, uh, you've got that option available to you. There is a front-facing 5 megapixel camera as well for selfies and uh, video conferencing and that kind of thing. Performance out of the tablet is pretty decent. It's certainly able to keep up with most of the Android apps that you might throw at it. Uh, here, of course, is YouTube running, and you can see uh, just how quickly things come up here. I am on my Wi-Fi network right now, but uh, generally I found the performance to be uh, more than acceptable for what most people might do with a tablet, at least in the consumer side of things. So by and large, it does seem to be uh, performing as expected. Now, I did install some games on here to see how it performs as a gaming platform. Again, it's not necessarily a gaming device, but you've got a nice 1080p display here. Uh, so we've got the Android version of Minecraft running uh, quite smoothly here. We'll pop out of here and run over to uh, GTA Vice City and see how that works. And you can see how quickly things switch around when you've got enough uh, uh, room in the RAM here. So uh, overall, gaming on it does feel pretty nice. I think you'll have a good experience with some low-end uh, retro game emulators also, like the 8 and 16-bit stuff. You'll probably be able to get the PlayStation 1 to run on here, but uh, this will not be a good platform for running the Dolphin emulator. And on the 3D Mark Slingshot test, we got a score of 855, which doesn't make it a gaming powerhouse, especially in the graphics department, as you can see here. But check out some of its physics scores. Its CPU is actually competitive with the uh, K1 tablet from NVIDIA. Uh, the K1, of course, has an NVIDIA GPU built in, so it does uh, really focus on graphical performance. But uh, CPU performance on this one does pretty well, surprisingly so. And I think uh, given that, uh, you might see some CPU-intensive applications run quite nicely on here compared to that tablet and many others. So all in, I'm really quite pleased with this tablet. Even the build quality on it is very nice for the price point. You've got a nice glass screen here. Uh, they do have a coating on it to cut down on the fingerprints. If you uh, really like your blinking notification lights, they got one on there for you as well. On the back here, it's got uh, kind of a rubberized coating over its plastic shell, so it does add a little more quality to the feel here. It really does feel like a, a very solid device for the price point. And I do look at a lot of low-cost tablets here on the channel. In fact, the playlist you'll see down below in the video description has all of those uh, low-cost tablets we've looked at. And a lot of times, those lower-priced tablets are coming from generic manufacturers, and I'm recommending people buy at your own risk and everything. But uh, this one is from a major manufacturer, Again, under 230 bucks with the LTE built in. Uh, you get a one-year warranty and uh, some degree of customer support that you may not get from one of those riskier buys. So I'm very comfortable recommending this. It's not a groundbreaking device by any means, but if you're looking for an 8-inch tablet that gets your Android stuff done efficiently, this will probably do it for you. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold-level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast. Chris Allegretta, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.